with the English Language Center at Lakehead University. Painting is something that I love to do. I'm not necessarily um, a professional or great at it by any means, but I'm going to show you how to paint a sunset through birch trees this evening. So uh, what will you need? Brushes, they don't have to be fancy. Um, Mine are all from like the dollar store, Dollarama. Um, wherever you may be, may have different kind of supply stores. Uh, we have all different kinds of paints. Uh, I have some more paints over here. You're gonna need something to wash your brushes off and something to clean your brushes. And then um, a canvas. If you don't have a canvas, that's okay. I often paint on cardboard boxes um, and um, enjoy the paintings that I create just on reused paper. So you can, I also paint a lot on wood. So in the summertime, I paint a lot on wood. So if you have wood laying around or some cardboard, you can cut it into a canvas shape. Or if you have a canvas, you can paint on that. So paint, brushes, water, cloth, canvas, some type of drop sheet to keep your painting area uh, protected. And this will get us started. And then I will show you the next steps. Once your canvas is completely dry from your blending of your sunset, um, then we're going to be using um, white and a brush similar to this. If you don't have one like this, you can use um, one like this, something that you can get a little bit of um, width with. Be creative. That's the best thing about art is that you can do whatever you like. So I don't like to create a lot of waste in my life, so I just reuse things. So I'm just using this for my uh, 
for my paint. And I'm just gonna do long, straight brush strokes. So I want all the white to be solid so that you don't see the sunset coming through. And these are gonna be our birch. So birch, uh, if you don't have birch trees where um, you live, they're a tree, they're very popular in Thunder Bay. And um, they were a huge part, I always say, in the history of our area because in the um, 1800s when the fur trade came through this part, um, birch trees made canoes out of their birch bark, um, macaques, which are birch bark baskets, um, were also made to, um, to hold food and items and, and the sap from the birch was used to make the canoes waterproof on the seams. So they actually have, um, they actually have a kind of a cool history to our area and they're just a beautiful, um, beautiful tree. They have like a paper bark on them. You can never peel their bark because it will um, kill the tree actually. So for people that are harvesting the birch bark for canoes or, or baskets, that kind of thing, um, they, it's a tradition that's been passed down to them and they have a way of doing it so that it doesn't actually hurt the tree. So if you're out and about walking around, um, don't peel the birch bark. So all you need now is like a straight edge. You can use like an old gift card. I just took the um, edge off of an old box in the house. And then you put some black paint and you're just gonna dab your, dab your straight edge into it until you have some black paint on it. And then you're gonna start at one side and pull it across the white paint in kind of a, a swoop, like a like a very um, subtle smile shape. And then that will give you the rounded shape of the birch tree. So then once you do that side, then you're just gonna go this way So this is gonna be the base um, and the main part of our birch tree. And then I'll show you how we're gonna go back in. So if you see here, it's kind of the same pattern that wouldn't naturally happen on a tree. So then you can just go back with your um, paper and just kind of add a little bit more dimension through. You wanna keep your lines nice and crisp because they are the edge of the tree. Okay, so then that's your basic um, birch tree bark. And so I'm gonna do a few more through here because we want it to look like we're looking through um, a forest or a grove of birch trees and seeing the sunset in the background. So we don't want them all the same size because trees do grow at different uh, rates. Um, so do some skinnier, some bigger, but that's the basic technique. If you want to practice on a piece of paper, um, you can get some old newspapers and practice an old cardboard box before you do it on your canvas. Um, but that's the basics. And then I'm just going to keep adding birch trees. And then our next step, I'll come back and I'll show you how to add in some branches and some detail. So that's uh, how to paint a birch tree. As you can see, I've added in a little bit of detail. So there's some branches. I've added in some markings, a couple of little dots here and there. And um, the best way to do this is with a small fine tip um, paintbrush. And then just using the paint that you already have, you can dip into the white and the black to kind of get some different color. 
So I've done all the trees except for this last one. I've sharpened up the edges and added a bit of shadow um, to some of the ones to make them feel like they're a little bit closer and the smaller ones are a little bit further back. And uh, I'm just gonna add a tree branch in here. I've lost my cameraman, um, or in this case this evening, my camera girl, who's my daughter. Uh, so I'm just going to start off by doing like a circular oval kind of motion. And then just going naturally with the flow. So I've, however you want your branch, if you want it to come out a little bit more, I often fall into the trap of painting very similar branches. So I'm going to try to make it a little bit different. Maybe it has a little bit of a different move. So just building in your outline first, and then you can start adding your dimension. And then you'll come off the top, follow out. So I'm purposely going with um, light paint right now because I'm kind of just building up the, the branch. And then as I um, fill it in, it's gonna take shape. So that's gonna be the base. I'm gonna fill it in with some gray and then a little bit of extra black. I'm gonna add in some dots here and there. Uh, just like birch bark has. Uh, whenever you're painting something that you're not familiar with, I often um, will screenshot pictures for inspiration. So that's what I did with the background color, is I found a sunset picture that I liked where it was kind of more reds and then went up to um, um, blues and purples, just because I was feeling that vibe tonight of those colors. And so you can just... Uh, find inspiration if I'm painting something like the Northern Lights or Waves or something with movement. I'll watch some YouTube videos of actual waves and actual Northern Lights just to get a feel for how they they uh, have natural movement. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm no professional. I 100% paint for fun, but uh, I really do love it. It's a great um, way to spend an evening and it kind of puts you in a um, um, really good positive mind frame, which is really important to, to keep that up, especially with um, different stresses that can come. So painting can be an amazing uh, therapeutic art. And the best thing about painting is it's just for you. So if I finish this and I decide it's not something that I absolutely love, I can always paint over. Or I can set it aside, or if maybe like someone in my family or my friend group really likes it, then you can say, would you like it? And if they want it, they can, uh, they can take it. So I'm just going to finish up with my branch and then I will show you the final um, picture. But my best advice to you is to just have fun with it. So when you're blending your pictures, uh, or sorry, blending your background, just really just kind of get into the therapeutic movement of blending together. And if you have a spot that needs a little bit more, add that paint or add a little bit of white in there. Um, clean your brush. Uh, and then the, the biggest thing when painting is let your layers dry. So when I first started painting, I would always rush it um, because I wanted to get to the next step. So go do something. I have the record player going right now and I'm playing some old, um, some old tunes and I'm just kind of enjoying the evening. So it's not just sitting and painting. I've been getting up in between, letting it dry. So um, kind of finding your groove and just really enjoying the process of it. And then that way you've enjoyed yourself, whether the painting is to your standard or not. I often, I'm not fussy for my own work. Um, I often am very critical and I have to get away from that because I just paint because I love it. So I hope you guys had fun tonight and it inspired you to get artsy. There's hundreds and hundreds of painting um, videos online and well, probably thousands and millions actually, instead of hundreds and hundreds. But um, just enjoy yourself, find something that inspires you and uh, pick up a brush and some paint. It's cheap, I get my paint and my brushes and my canvases all from the dollar store. 
Um, if you don't have a dollar store where you are, kind of source out uh, places where it's not um, super expensive. And then if you find you really love it, then you can invest in some um, more expensive uh, equipment.